idea behind the race was to see how far unlimited canoes could go um, in terms of getting faster, stronger, lighter, innovative designs. Um, that was the whole purpose to see how fast paddlers could uh, push that threshold and try and get up to speeds a lot faster than uh, normal or traditional canoes. In the world of outrigger paddling, there are a handful of races that can define a paddler's journey. Molokai Ho, Molo Solo, Hawaii Nui, Olamo, meaning one crew, is the first race of its kind held in Hawaiian waters. In three days time, nine paddlers per team will travel over 90 miles crossing two channels in three different islands. With $50,000 in prize money up for grabs, teams from all over the world descend on the islands of Hawaii to test their skills with the world's best. One team in particular, Simple Mobile 404, led by legendary waterman Danny Chain, along with California's most talented paddlers, put everything on the table to compete on this world stage. It takes a certain mental aptitude to hurl yourself between two islands, 20 miles to the closest piece of land, there is no pause button, no hopping off the treadmill when you feel tired. The ocean can be a gentle playground and can turn on you in the blink of an eye. As of now, really. So, you guys just have fun out there. We got some good help behind us, some good support uh, on and off the water. So, just be thankful for what we have and be out there paddling canoes and, and you know, doing what we love to do. That's about it. At the start of race day one, to everyone's surprise, Team Simple Mobile 404 shot off to an early lead, followed close behind by Team Primo, aka Team Hawaii, and followed closely behind them, Team Livestrong. With only about four miles till the finish, Simple Mobile 404 starts having trouble with their Venturi system. With Primo biting at their heels, there is little they can do but finish the race close behind. With race day two in less than 12 hours, Team 404 prepares for the next leg, the Pilolo Channel. I was blown away, it was, it was crazy. A lot crazier than uh, California water for sure. Can't really simulate that. Yeah, this is my last leg. Um, so I'm gonna just put it all out there. The possibility of it getting canceled, but I think it's uh, actually the conditions that you hope for. You know, the, the water moving, the wind pushing you, um, the bumps, and then having the boats that are specifically made for those conditions. So um, we're all worried it's gonna be too rough, but in reality, um, you go to bed hoping it's just gonna be rough enough. So I'm stoked. I think the whole team is fired up. The guys uh, yesterday, day one, um, had an amazing job against some of the best surfing canoe uh, 
paddlers in the world and so um, it just gets the team day two pumped up and ready to go and you know uh, defend what they did and um, hopefully keep the bar up high. Wind up to 25, seas up to 11 feet. The big thing is that thunder and lightning guys, it's what it's coming this way. Okay, it's coming this way. So as we're gonna at 815, we'll have a big spiel. You guys will have Kalani. If visibility goes down to nothing like it was yesterday, we are gonna allow escort boats to go in front of you, set your guys from line. Okay, if visibility goes down to nothing, at that point you guys follow and they will set the run. On race day two, Maui to Molokai, Team Simple Mobile 404 got off to a slow start. Reaching as far back as fifth place before the unexpected happened. As the race ensued, the weather did not. To everyone's surprise, the channel that is normally raging was dead flat. With Team Primo on the outside line and Simple Mobile on the inside, the race was still anyone's to take. It was an outright slugfest between Team Primo and Simple Mobile 404. As my camera battery runs out, Bobby Poplar of the Simple Mobile crew captures the moment. footage, Simple Mobile 404 couldn't have been more excited on their first place finish, followed closely behind by Team Primo and Livestrong. On the morning of race day three, I think everyone would agree that Mother Nature was in the mood to play. With trade winds blowing a solid 25 knots and 12 foot groundswell from the northwest, the conditions were seemingly perfect. With the last leg of the race being the Molokai Channel, one of, if not, the toughest channel anyone can cross in a canoe, the race was on. With an estimated crossing time of three hours, this was neither the turtle nor the hare's game. This is a game of survival, and the crew who survives the best wins. With top speeds rounding out to about 20 miles an hour, Here's Josh Creighton breaking one of three paddles this day and showing his remarkable skill by steering with a flimsy piece of carbon fiber and sticking his arm in the water to gain direction.
Once again, a faulty Venturi train wasn't draining water as fast as it was coming in. Having this happen in the middle of a race is a lot like having the wind knocked out of you. Luckily, this entire event only took about five minutes. But also, cost him the race. With Diamond Head just in front of them, Simple Mobile Spirit started a race at the thought of a good plate lunch and some good stories to swap with the other crews. As the team passes the two marker, it's in the books. Third place overall. Utterly exhausted, the race is over. Or as I say in Hawaii, pow hong. All done. It's over. We're done. That was epic. <laughs> that was one really angry channel. And it sort of took its little bit of uh, temper out on us, I think. A couple times, yeah. Fifth lead time, again, 11 hours, 8 minutes, 30 seconds, and winning a total prize of $6,500. Four for Simple Mobile, team number one. Brothers. 10 hours, 39 minutes, 51 seconds, and winning a total of $26,000.